Hello and welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. You know, your trusted source for HIV testing with over 4,500 testing labs across the United States. That's right. Today, we're tackling a question that's been on a lot of minds. Are we finally getting closer to an HIV vaccine? Mm -hmm. We're going to break down why this virus has been so tricky to target, explore the different types of vaccines in development, and even get a glimpse into how they actually work. That's right. But before we dive in, a quick note for any listeners specifically seeking information about HIV testing, remember, we're here to support you. You can find a wealth of resources, including a directory of testing locations near you, on our website, www.hivenatusguide.com. It's really quite remarkable how much progress has been made in HIV research, but it's true that developing a vaccine has proven to be a unique challenge. Absolutely. And one of the things that really struck me from the research is just how different HIV is compared to other viruses we've successfully developed vaccines for. Right. Like, why is it so hard to hit this moving target? Well, one of the main reasons is HIV's ability to mutate rapidly. Think of it like this. With traditional vaccines, our immune systems are trained to recognize and remember a specific viral enemy. But HIV is constantly changing its appearance, making it very difficult for our immune system to keep up. So it's like our immune system is trying to fight a chameleon that keeps blending in. Exactly. And on top of that, HIV has another trick up its sleeve. It actually integrates itself into our DNA. Wait, so it becomes part of us? How does that even work? Essentially, HIV inserts its genetic code into the DNA of our cells. This means it's not just floating around in the bloodstream, it's hiding within our very cells, making it incredibly difficult for our immune defenses to detect and eliminate. That's crazy. And the sources mentioned that HIV actually attacks the immune system's T cells. That's like disabling the very army meant to fight it. It is HIV specifically targets these T cells, which are crucial for coordinating our immune response by infecting and destroying T cells. HIV weakens our body's ability to fight back. Okay, so we've established that HIV is a tough opponent, but how are scientists trying to tackle this challenge? I understand there are two main types of HIV vaccines being developed, preventative and therapeutic. That's right. Preventive vaccines, as the name suggests, aim to prevent HIV infection in the first place. Mm. They're designed to prime the immune system to recognize and neutralize the virus before it can establish a foothold. And therapeutic vaccines are for people already living with HIV. Exactly. The goal of a therapeutic vaccine is to help the immune system control the virus more effectively, potentially reducing or even eliminating the need for daily medication. And this is where things get really interesting. Unlike traditional vaccines, these don't contain the actual HIV virus, right? That's a key point. These vaccines utilize either protein fragments or mRNA technology. Can you break those down for us? I know mRNA technology is what's used in some of the COVID-19 vaccines, but how does it work in an HIV vaccine? Sure. Protein fragment vaccines expose the immune system to small pieces of HIV proteins, teaching it to recognize and attack the actual virus if encountered mRNA vaccines, on the other hand, work a little differently. Do tell. Well, imagine sending a blueprint to your body cells, instructing them to build a specific protein that's essentially what mRNA vaccines do weigh. They deliver instructions to ourselves to produce harmless HIV-like proteins. This then triggers an immune response, preparing our bodies to fight the actual virus if it ever shows up. That's amazing. But if these methods are so innovative, why has it taken so long to develop an HIV vaccine? What's been holding scientists back all these years? It's not for lack of effort, that's for sure. There are several factors that have made HIV vaccine development particularly challenging for one. HIV exists in multiple strains, meaning a vaccine needs to be effective against a wide variety of slightly different versions of the virus. Finding a universal solution has been a major hurdle. It's like trying to hit a target that's not only moving, but also keeps splitting into different targets. A very accurate analogy, another significant factor, is the need for rigorous safety protocols during clinical trials, given the life-threatening nature of HIV researchers, have to be incredibly cautious to ensure the well-being of trial participants, which adds complexity and time to the development process. That makes complete sense, especially for our listeners who are familiar with the importance of accurate and reliable HIV testing. Mm -hmm. We always emphasize the need for responsible practices at HIV RNA Test Guide. Absolutely. Absolutely. And on top of all that, there's another hurdle, unlike some other viruses, where we've seen people naturally clear the infection. 
We haven't observed this with HIV. This lack of a natural model for immune response makes it difficult for scientists to understand and replicate the kind of immune response needed for a successful vaccine. So it's been a long and challenging road, but are there reasons to be optimistic about the future? Mm. I've heard a lot about the mRNA revolution and how it could lead to a breakthrough. There's definitely a renewed sense of hope in the scientific community. The success of mRNA vaccines against COVID-19 has provided a major boost to HIV vaccine. Research scientists are excited about mRNA's ability to potentially trigger a stronger, more targeted immune response against HIV compared to previous approaches. That's really encouraging to hear. Can you tell us about some of the most promising trials happening right now? One of the most talked about trials is being conducted by Moderna, the company that developed one of the successful COVID-19 mRNA vaccines. They're currently testing an mRNA HIV vaccine and early results are promising. That's exciting. What makes their approach so promising? Well, initial data from the Moderna trial showed that the vaccine induced strong antibody responses in a significant percentage of participants, which is something previous vaccines struggled with. Wow, that's a huge deal. And I've also heard about the Mosaico trial. What's the approach there? The Mosaico trial is a global study that's using a mosaic approach, combining different viral proteins to target multiple HIV strains. It's like creating a patchwork quilt of protection aiming to provide broader coverage against a wider range of HIV variants. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So are we on the cusp of an HIV vaccine? What can we expect in the coming years? While we can't say for certain when a vaccine will be available, the advancements we're seeing suggest we're heading in the right direction. We can anticipate more advanced mRNA trials within the next five to 10 years. That's not too far off anything else on the horizon that you're particularly excited about. Researchers are also exploring combination approaches that involve using vaccines alongside existing HIV prevention methods like pre-PIP. Ah, pre-PP. That's a daily medication that helps reduce the risk of HIV infection, right? Yeah. I imagine combining that with a vaccine could be a powerful one-two punch. Exactly. The idea is that a vaccine could prime the immune system and pre-PIP would provide an additional layer of protection. It's a multi-pronged approach that could be incredibly effective. So it sounds like we're at a really exciting point in HIV research. But even with these advancements, I think it's important to remember that regular testing is still crucial, especially for our listeners who are committed to taking charge of their sexual health. Couldn't agree more. While the prospect of a vaccine is incredibly hopeful, we can't let our guard down. Early detection through regular testing is still the most effective way to protect ourselves and our partners. And that's where HIV RNA test guide comes in our mission, is to provide you with the most accurate and up-to-date information about HIV testing options so you can make informed decisions about your health. What I find particularly helpful about your website is the vast database of testing labs with over 4,500 labs across the United States. You've made it incredibly convenient for people to find a testing location near them. We're really proud of that resource. Yeah. We want to remove any barriers to testing and make the process as simple and stress-free as possible. And speaking of removing barriers, what are some of the other exciting developments on the horizon in HIV research? We're seeing increased global collaboration with scientists, governments, and pharmaceutical companies all working together to accelerate the pace of research and development. This level of collaboration is unprecedented and offers a lot of hope for the future. It's like the whole world is rallying together to tackle this challenge. It really is inspiring to witness. We're seeing more funding being allocated to HIV research, which allows scientists to pursue bolder ideas and explore new avenues of investigation. And it sounds like mRNA technology is going to play a major role in those investigations. Definitely the success of mRNA vaccines against COVID-19 has opened up a whole new world of possibilities for HIV vaccine development. Scientists are optimistic that this technology has the potential to revolutionize the field. It's amazing to think that the technology that helped us get through a global pandemic hmm. could also be the key to ending the HIV epidemic. It's a testament to the power of scientific ingenuity and perseverance. And speaking of perseverance, let's circle back to the importance of staying vigilant in our prevention efforts. Absolutely. Even with all this exciting progress, we can't afford to become complacent. Right. We need to continue practicing safe sex, getting tested regularly, and educating ourselves and others about HIV knowledge is our greatest weapon in this fight. An HIV RNA test guide is here to arm you with that knowledge. We provide evidence-based information about all aspects of HIV testing, from the different types of tests available to understanding your results. Your website really is a one-stop shop for anyone seeking reliable information about HIV testing, and with the added convenience of being able to locate testing labs near you, it's an invaluable resource. 
Thanks to the kind words, we're committed to making a difference in the fight against HIV, and we believe that empowering people with knowledge is a crucial part of that fight. So to wrap things up, what's the biggest takeaway you hope our listeners glean from this deep dive? I think the key message is one of cautious optimism. We've made incredible strides in HIV research, and the advancements we're seeing today offer a glimmer of hope for a future where HIV is no longer a global health threat, but we're not there yet. Right. A vaccine, even if developed, won't be a magic bullet. It will likely be part of a comprehensive prevention strategy that includes existing methods like PAP and regular testing. Exactly. It's about having a multifaceted approach. We need to continue to raise awareness, promote education, and advocate for research funding. And most importantly, we need to continue to support and care for those living with HIV. Absolutely, we're all in this together, and by working together, we can overcome this challenge. It's been a truly fascinating discussion, haven't it? <laughs> I think what strikes me most is the sheer dedication of these researchers. It's like they're facing this constantly shifting puzzle, and yet they never give up. It's really inspiring, isn't it? They keep pushing forward, learning from every setback, and yeah. using that knowledge to refine their approach. The progress we've seen, especially with mRNA technology, is a testament to that dedication. And speaking of pushing forward, I'd love to get your perspective on something. The sources we've explored paint a picture of cautious optimism, but I'm curious, do you personally believe we'll see an HIV vaccine become a reality within, say, the next five years? That's a great question, and it's one that sparks a lot of debate, even within the scientific community. Five years is a relatively short time frame in the world of vaccine development, especially with a virus as complex as HIV. But the pace of innovation is accelerating, and the breakthroughs we've witnessed recently suggest that it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility. So it's a wait and see situation, but with a healthy dose of hope. Precisely, we need to temper our expectations while acknowledging the incredible progress that's being made. And remember, even if a vaccine is developed within the next five years, it will likely be one piece of a larger prevention puzzle. That's a really important point. A vaccine, even if highly effective, won't eliminate the need for other prevention strategies like PPIP, regular testing, and open communication about sexual health. Exactly. It's about having a multi-layered approach to protection, and that's something we emphasize at HIV RNA Test Guide as well, right? Absolutely. Our goal is to empower our listeners with knowledge about all aspects of HIV prevention and testing. We provide resources, information, and even a directory of over 4,500 testing labs across the United States, making it easier for people to access the care they need. It's truly remarkable what you've built with HIV RNA Test Guide. It's a testament to your commitment to public health and your dedication to providing accurate and accessible information. Thank you. We're incredibly passionate about this mission, and we believe that knowledge is key to ending the HIV epidemic. And I think our conversation today has highlighted just how important that knowledge is. We've explored the complexities of HIV, the challenges of vaccine development, and the reasons for hope on the horizon. But most importantly, we've em emphasized the power of staying informed, taking charge of our health, and supporting one another. Beautifully said. And on that note, I want to thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the world of HIV vaccine research. It's been an enlightening conversation, and we hope our listeners have walked away feeling informed and empowered. It's been a pleasure. And remember, even though the search for a vaccine continues, there are things you can do today to protect yourself and your loved ones, stay informed, stay safe, and never hesitate to reach out for support. And of course, don't forget to visit www.hivernatusguide.com for a wealth of information and resources about HIV testing. We're here to guide you every step of the way. Until next time, stay curious, stay engaged, and stay healthy.